For this video, I am going to recreate some of the most questionable videos on this channel. The video that I want to recreate this time is Glow Line Effect in Adobe Illustrator Tutorial. There are several problems that become questions in this video. The main problem is that there is no audio explanation, so there are some things that should be important points, but they get overlooked, so that many viewers failed when trying it. It's a good idea to watch this video completely, because every detail in this video will affect the final result, and if you miss something, it could be that the final result will be different from the results I made as an example in this video. In my old video, actually, I want to show you one of the many techniques to create a neon light effect. Namely by using, color dodge, on, blending mode. If you are new to this, you can go to the transparency panel, which you can find on the collapsed panel. Or, if you don't have it there, you can bring it up in the window menu, and search for transparency. Then you just have to open the drop down menu here. And color dodge is in between many types of blending modes. This color dodge can be applied in any form of design to create the impression of light, sparkles, and rays. Maybe we can also create a flare effect with this technique, or we can even make an illuminating effect on the flame. Before we start, it's good if we know what the color dodge is, so that we can easily use it. The first thing to know is the blending mode. Because color dodge is one of the many types of blending modes. So, blending mode is a mode of blasting the color of an object with the color of another object that is under it. To work with the blending mode, you have at least two colored objects. The first, is the base color, and the second is the blend color. Combining these two colors, produces a result color, that depends on the type of blending mode you choose. So the formula you have to remember is, base color, plus, blend color, equals, result color. As you can see in the blending mode drop-down menu, there are various types of blending modes separated by groups. The first group is normal, darken, lighten, contrast, comparative, and color. Each of these groups has specific characteristics for blending colors. As you can see, that the color dodge is in the lighten group. This lighten group works by making the black color of the result color invisible, and only colors other than black will be affected by the blend color. Group lighten on blending mode will produce a brighter result color. And specifically, the color dodge in blending mode works by producing a bright effect on the result color by reducing the contrast between the base color and the blend color, resulting in saturated mid-tones and blown highlights. For example, here I've created a red to black, and black and white linear gradient as the base color. And for the blend colors, I've created a black to white radial gradient. And make sure this blend color is above the base color. For the blend color, I will change the blending mode from normal to color dodge. But before that I will duplicate this radial gradient. One with no blending mode and one with color dodge applied, so you can see the difference clearly. As you can see here, that radial gradient shape that was not applied, color dodge, gave no result at all. Compared to the radial gradient that has been applied color dodge to it, it will give a significantly different result color. If you look at these two radial gradients and put them side by side, you can see how this color dodge works with colors, especially in the white color to black color gradient. Pure white still gives white results and ignores black instead. And what's more impressive here is what happens to colors other than these two colors. The transition between white and black is what gives the impression of glow. You can also experiment with moving the blend color object, to see how it reacts to the base color, which in this case is a black to white gradient. And you can also try it in other colors, to get amazing results. As I mentioned earlier, the blending mode that is included in the lighten group, only affects colors other than rich black. So, when we position the blend color in the rich black part, it will not bring any changes. And if it is positioned on a color other than black, then the blend color will produce a bright effect. From the simulation example that I made here by using a radial gradient as a blend color, it will be easier for us to see the results directly. Whereas the experts will usually explain it another way and use examples like this one, 
and with a complicated algorithm explanation. And you will be familiar with color dodge or all kinds of blending modes if you are a Photoshop user, because most of the work there uses this blending mode. So in short, this color dodge gives a bright effect to the color by blending the base color with the blend color that is on top. After finding interesting results from this color dodge, we just have to do some experimenting by blending it with other techniques. Okay, without further ado, let's just open up a new document in Illustrator. The very important thing to know, when you want to work with color dodge, or any other type of blending mode, is that you have to make sure the color mode you want to use. Because the blending mode works differently in these two color modes. If you want to follow exactly what I did in this video, you should use RGB color mode, because if you use CMYK color mode it will produce a different result color. First of all, I'm going to make the background color as the base color. Remember the formula. The base color, plus the blend color, will produce the result color. So in this way, the result color will depend on the base color that you create. And the base color I want to use is dark blue, because I want the resulting glow effect to be blue. I use the darkest blue color, to create a dark background impression. Remember, color dodge can't work with 100% black. Next, for the first example, I'm going to create a glow line using a rectangle. You just need to make a rectangle that is the same length as the artboard. For the height, it can be adjusted later. Then I filled it with linear gradient, with a gradation, white in the middle and black at both ends. White color in the middle is to create a bright result color and the rest to create glow effect. As I talked about earlier, color dodge doesn't work on 100% black, and that transition from white to black is what creates the glow effect. After that you only need to change the blending mode to color dodge and you will get results like this. It's just as simple as that. But in the previous video. I made a glow effect using the blend tool to make a transition from white to black. Because basically they have the same working principle. To make it, you just need to create a straight line. You can make it using the pen tool or line segment tool. Set the stroke to 5 points. And set the width profile to profile number 1, like this so that we get a line that is tapered at both ends. Then go up to the object menu, and choose expand appearance. This will convert the line we made earlier into a path. Next, from this path we will create two more paths to make it transition to black. To create a path with the basic form of the previous path, is to use offset path in the object menu. Find path. And choose offset path. After the offset path panel is open, activate the preview, so that we can see the changes directly. Because previously I gave 5 points to the stroke weight, so here, I also gave it 5 points for the offset, so that the path that will be formed has the same distance as the first path that we made earlier. If you pay attention to the both ends, the newly formed path cannot cover areas that have two sharp corners. For that, we have to change the joint type, from miter, to round. Then do the same thing again to make the third path, so that we get three paths. Deepest path we give it a white color. The second path we give a gray color. And the outer path we give a rich black color. Next, we just have to unite them using the blend tool. With the blend tool active, all you have to do is select it by clicking on the innermost path or the white one. After that you just have to choose the gray path and the black path. And lastly, make sure the result has a smooth transition. To make sure, you just have to double click the blend tool on the toolbar, to bring up the blend tool panel. If smooth color doesn't produce a smooth transition, then I suggest to changing it to a specified distance and adjusting the values to get the right transition. In the end, you just have to change the blending mode to color dodge. 
It's just as simple as that, and our work is done. The question then, is how can we develop this technique into another level? Into text, or even other forms? Once you understand how the color dodge works, it will be easier to apply it to other level. All you have to do is some experiments or combine it with other techniques to produce different results. For the next video, I'll show you how this color dodge is used in other designs, like applying it to text and creating a light effect. Stay on this channel, subscribe and activate the notification bell so that when I upload the next video you will be the first to see it.